the UID or take a, um, a file ID to a case ID um, and things like that. So you have flexibility with um, working with other, so you don't have to get all of your data from our package, although you should because it makes it pretty easy. But if you are have some existing data um, and you want to translate some IDs, you could use our, our tools. And for example, if you're getting data from the genomic data commons, um, you'll, you may have some file names. So if we run that, let's do library um, genomic data commons, and then run that again. So you may want to use genomic data commons if you're interested in um, the newer harmonization that uh, the GDC provides. Um, and this will allow you to take the file name that you've downloaded um, and then convert these file names into TCGA IDs, file IDs and um, sample IDs. So, so, that, um, so these are just utilities when working with the different um, sources of um, data for TCGA. And then, um, how are we on time? I think we're... Um, okay. All right, so I'll um, go over how to subset, which is an important operation um, when working with your data. So if you have like a couple of genes of interest, um, you could divide all of your assays by those genes um, in using this bracket uh, subsetting operation. Um, so there, you can see there are two commas here. So before the first comma corresponds to the rows, the second spot in between the two commas correspond to the columns or the call data, and the third uh, spot or the rightmost spot here would correspond to the assays themselves. So here we are subsetting by the, the features across all of the experiments. So if all of your experiments are annotated by with genes, you can simply um, do an operation like that. Well, first you have to load data. And then um, subset by those genes, so it will only give you back the data that had those hits um, across all of those experiments. And if it doesn't have a hit, it'll just send you uh, a, a data set with zero rows because those genes were not found in that data. And then um, if you have a, um, a phenotype variable or clinical variable of interest, um, and you, maybe you only want to analyze stage four cases, um, you could use that to subset. So you do um, mini ACC dollar sign, pathologic stage equals equals stage four, and then um, put that in between those two commas, which correspond to either the call data or the column names, um, depending on the type of input. But here, we're, we're dividing our call data, and now we'll get a smaller um, mini ACC where you have only 15 samples, and um, we can look at the call data. Let's assign this. Oh, I put my answer here. You'll do call data on this. So now you see that we have a call data with 18 rows. So there are only about 18 um, patients who had a stage four um, ACC um, present. So, so it allows you to divide your data and if you do divide by the um, call data, all of the samples automatically get updated based on um, what patients are left with, um, with observations across all of those assays. So it's, it saves you a lot of time because otherwise you'd have to go 
through each of your assays and divide, figure out what, what patient has a sample in this assay and then remove, remove that if they don't. Um, and so it takes a long time, but here you can just do it in a simple um, one-liner here. And then lastly here, um, if you want to only extract, for example, one assay from the multi-assay experiment, you can do that and it will give you only the one that you wanted um, or that you're interested in. So, um, last thing I'll mention are the complete cases. And if you do complete cases, mini ACC, this will give you a um, logical vector of um, the column row names or call data row names or the patients that have um, data across all of the assays. So it gives you a, a nice way to be able to filter out if you're only interested in, say maybe you have two assays that you're interested in and you want to look at patients that have information in those two assays, then you can do this complete cases um, and, 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 and only analyze those patients that have information in those assays. So it makes it really easy to identify those and then um, subset based on that um, criteria. So I think that's, um, I'll open it up to questions now um, and maybe point you to the other um, vignettes that we have on, on the page here. So we have the, a small vignette for the study, a summary of the study. Um, the reference vignette for curated CCGA data, so you can see a nice table of all the um, um, cancer types and, and a CCGA utils cheat sheet for what, what does what within the package. Um, so feel free to um, pose any questions or email me. Um, you can find me um, on GitHub as uh, link dash ny or on on the bioconductor slack channel as well um, and i'll be happy to answer any questions that you have i know i went through a lot of stuff um, and so feel free to ask questions Actually, thank you so much for this talk. Uh, and it is really a great information, but so much information. So I do not have like right away question, but certainly I'm working on TCGA data set. So when working, when I have a questions, I shall just reach out to you. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, you can reach out to me and make use of these cheat sheets. They give you a nice summary of what's what functions we, we've worked on. And if you don't see something that, we've, um, that you want and, and um, you want um, present in the package, we can also um, accommodate that as well. So we're, we're very responsive to issues on GitHub and questions on the support site. So yeah, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So I guess we'll close everything out already. Are there any questions online? No. Okay. All right.
Yeah.